Blessings, friends. Welcome to Seekers of the Eternal podcast, episode 41. This one is transforming poison to wisdom. In this podcast, we talk about some of the current energy that probably many of us are feeling and ways to stay calm, sweet, and happy in a world full of conflict and turmoil and uncertainty. It is always the thing to do is to stoke that inner fire of joy so that we can be lights for the world, so that we can be uh, offering good things in this world. And we also talk about a recent art show that I got to help host with this group of friends of mine and my wife and some of the things that we went through to pull that off. And also talking about a recent painting that my brother and I painted for this art show around Yamantaka, the slayer of death, and the symbolism around this powerful deity that can help us to overcome all of the temptations that would take us off of our path in life. I uh, also talk about uh, a little bit about Garuda and the current uh, offerings that I'm making available in my online store for gold foil screen printed posters of the pantheon of Hindu and Buddhist deities. That one is available now on my website and my online store. It's a great way to support this podcast and support all of the things that we're doing here. So go check that out. And we really hope that you enjoy this podcast and may it bring you courage and energy and calmness and sweetness and happiness for your journey. Blessings to you, friends. Fear not, fellow seekers. Peace awaits you in the unknown. Welcome back to another episode of Seekers of the Eternal podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Jason. This is my brother, Krishna. Krishna, it is so nice to see you, my brother. Yeah, blessings, everyone. And it's nice to be with you and sharing again. Uh, let's let's just dive in and, and um, we'll just relax and release the tension in the body together. And then we'll just open with a little prayer here. And then we've got some really fun stuff to share with everybody today. So buckle up and let's drop into the present moment here together. Let's take in a deep, normal inhalation, breathing in and all the way out. And double inhale, intense inhale. <laughs> low, medium, high tension and all the muscles vibrate with energy and exhale, relax, release, feel the body. Again, inhale intense, low, medium, high tension, vibrate with willingness and exhale, relax, release, feel. Last round, inhale intense, low, medium, high tension and all the muscles vibrate with willpower and exhale. Relax, release, feel, just opening with a short prayer. Divine Mother, problems cannot exist whenever you are near. Give us strength always to hold you in our hearts and to share your light and joy with everyone we meet. Om Shanti Shanti. Peace. Amen. It has been... Too long, my friend, and I'm glad to be back here with you. I've, I've needed this very, very much. Actually, in the last few weeks, um, I've had um, a lot going on. I'm sure you've had a lot going on, so I can't wait to kind of hear about your journey and some of the learnings that you've taken over the last few weeks. And uh, yeah, I'd love to share some of the things I've been through uh, myself and looking forward to uplifting each other and, and all of our listeners today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's our, our, our dose of, of therapy for each other and for, for everyone listening. I'm sure we're all kind of like similarly going through similar waves here uh, on the planet. So this yeah. is so nice to be able to collectively feel what, you know, everyone is, is going through and, and share our stories uh, so that we can uh, and just inspire each other on, on our paths and, and all the stuff that is going on you know i obviously the things that are going on in the world right now are pretty wild it's a wild looking movie if you're if you're watching the the story that's going around going on around the world i mean i don't i don't make it a practice of of watching a lot of news but you know the highlights and all of the things that that you see um you know i i i 
I have like a little email that comes in that just basically gives me the the facts on what's happening around the world. I don't watch talking heads give me their opinions about what's happening around the world and get swayed by all of that. But I do keep up with all of the kind of current things that are happening in the world. Obviously, the Middle East is is just uh, ripe with conflict and it's got a lot of people nervous and, and worried um, and uh, I think a lot of us are are just feeling this collective anxiety that that's going on around the world, and and also into like uh, we're so busy in our lives these days. It seems the more technology that we have, the more things that we're accomplishing, and the more competition is out there, mm. and all of the things that we're struggling to keep up with, and to have more productivity, and you know worries about. Um, you know, what's the future going to hold for us and how are we going to be able to support ourselves? So yeah. all of that stuff I'd like to kind of address too and just um, look at it in maybe a different way than than um, maybe maybe we're used to approaching these kind of things in a more fun way of <laughs> just like kind of relieving some of the anxiety around that. Um, maybe just opening uh, around that with some some words from Paramahansa Yogananda. This is just this is this is some of the the remedy for uh, for this for for times like this, um, and really, I would say that when we find ourselves in an age like this, we find ourselves in this period where there's so much um, uncertainty in the world, and I you know possibly on the edge of wars and all of these kind of things, world wars. Um, uh, and all of the things that are going on with the environment and and uh, natural disasters and all these kind of things. We've got it all. This movie has it all right yeah, now. Yeah. So I would say it's just a it's a great time for people who are looking to awaken. This is a great time to come to Earth if you are looking mm. to awaken. Uh, the more things that we can go through and overcome and ride through these ups and downs with a, a sense of calmness, man, you can just learn so much. So if if you're someone who's interested in in waking up in this lifetime, the, this is a really great time to be on earth because mm. there's so much opportunity to learn every day and to uh, to stay calm throughout all of this stuff. The, the big thing is just there's, there's, there's no reason to be afraid. We can we can become in tune with uh, the universe around us and we can see the world, the, the universe as our divine mother who loves us, who cares about us, that every obstacle that comes our way is really an opportunity if we see it properly. Mm. It's a time to train your mind and to uh, put into practice like real, these uh, these ancient techniques that we all know about. We've all heard. It's not a secret anymore. You don't have to, you know, leave your home and your family and go to a cave in the wilderness to find these things. They're available. So yeah. that's it. It's just a, a call to, uh, you know, these. this is a wake up call. All of these things that you're seeing, all of this uh, things that can be so frightening, they're just they're just prods to, like, hey, guys, wake up, wake up, wake up, and wake up from the dream. Um, start training your mind. Start um, putting these things into practice. We, we don't need to be afraid. We can be calm and and sweet, and we can get through anything with that attitude. Yeah. Uh, just some words from Yogananda to open up and just, you know, address the elephant in the room with all of that. Um, Yogananda says, be silent and calm every night for at least 10 minutes, preferably much longer before you retire, and again in the morning before starting the day. This will produce an unbreakable inner habit of happiness, which will make you able to meet the trying situations of the everyday battle of life. With that unchangeable happiness within, seek to fulfill your daily needs. Seek happiness more and more in your mind and less and less in the desire to acquire things. Be so happy in your mind that nothing that comes can possibly make you unhappy. Be happy because you know that you have acquired the power not to be negative, and because you know that you can acquire at will whatever you need. Om.
So how do you put something like that into practice when you think of it in your own life, Chris? How, how do you, when you read that, um, you know, anything you need, the universe will provide. How do you um, make that something that becomes an immediate reality for you? Yeah, what what it, what is happening more and more for me uh, is that I'm learning that it's all my responsibility. Mm. Like all of this life right. is my responsibility, whether I am suffering or if I'm happy is my responsibility. So the effort that I'm putting in that morning and evening, putting in that time of silence, checking in attuning with the universe, attuning with the divine and building this symbiotic relationship with it so that it doesn't feel like I am just, um, Yogananda talks a lot about the being like uh, a bubble in the waves, you know, the waves on the shore. He says, you know, we can, we can feel like we're this bubble being tossed around mm -hmm. by the waves. But the idea is that we are actually the ocean, that we can merge back and become the ocean again, not feel like we're just on this surface being bumped around, worried about getting popped by mm -hmm. all of the waves of life. And the more and more that we see it as our responsibility, so if you're feeling agitated, if you're feeling nervous, afraid, anxious, it's not because of the situation that you're feeling that way. It's because you've lost touch with reality of who you really are, what you really are. You are infinite. You are eternal. Uh, you cannot be harmed. Mm -hmm. You are an infinite, eternal being, a spiritual being, having a human relationship. You just put on virtual reality goggles and you're playing the video game. I mean, there's like a Rick and Morty episode about this, right? It's like you're going and you just get so caught up in, in this kind of like thing where you, you think it's all so real and you're so caught up in it. You think you have to be like so um, anxious and afraid and nervous to be I know that even sometimes I, I have conversations with um, with friends and people and I understand it. It's like, well, in this world where there's so many people suffering, it feels wrong to be happy. Mm. I feel like I'm supposed to be uh, having a sense of sorrow for all that's going on. Um, I understand the, you know, that sort of, it, it, it seems like compassion, but it's, it's it's actually something that will make it so that you don't have the strength to help anyone. Mm. You no, know? if we get so caught up in in all of the anxieties and the fears and everything that's going on, and we feel like we also need to be kind of dour and 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 sad about everything that's happening, how are we going to have the ability to be a light in this world? How are yeah. we going to have the ability to create artwork that inspires people? How are we going to be able to? be creative and, and, uh, be an example, you know? And so, yeah, that's, that's just, uh, so I guess an example of, of how it kind of comes into play for my life. We'll just like, uh, choose a, a current, like a, a recent example. We, um, I just, uh, helped out my wife. She just, um, curated a gallery exhibit, a big, uh, group exhibit, uh, art show that, um, we launched last Saturday. Um, this is a it's a it's a big space that we have. It's a pretty cool thing that we've got here in St. Petersburg, Florida. A gallery called Mai's Gallery. Um, he is uh, he he my friend Chad Chad Mai's. Yeah, he's uh, acquired the this this space that's uh, owned by a, a distillery that's building out. Um, you know, they bought an old bus depot, this giant plot of land that really none of us knew existed, like pretty close downtown in the warehouse district area that is just kind of like blocked off by some walls that is under an overpass. And it's like hidden like right near downtown. And downtown St. Pete has like developed over these past years. So like so many new high rises and apartments and, and everything seems to be taken, you know. So there used to be so many old buildings that we could like throw gallery shows in and have like big spaces and do kind of whatever we wanted. And, and that has sort of gone away. 
Hmm. And then all of a sudden, this uh, the this distillery had, had acquired this old bus depot with it, you know, repair buses and all this kind of stuff. It's a huge place. And so for for a period of time, they've um, they've allowed uh, my friend Chad to take over uh, uh, portions of this and throw gallery exhibits and um, have big shows. So we'll have these these shows where it's like almost maybe like um, 1,500 to 2,000 people show up, lots of, you know, um, giant parking parking lots and everything like in there. And it, we still even fill those up. And, you know, um, so it's like a, a big opportunity to kind of like do like what we used to do back in the day in St. Pete and throw these like big gallery exhibits and uh, get a lot of people in. So we, uh, uh, my wife was curating this, this exhibit, been working on it for months, um, had a couple of, um, uh, artists from out of town, Jacob Bannon, uh, from, uh, the band Converge and Alex Hare from the, uh, the, uh, the band Lotion and his, his brand Death Traders. Um, so it's like old kind of chat, like, uh, Jacob Bannon is like a, a childhood hero of ours, you know, grew up um, uh, watching his band and going to the Converge shows and um, Death Traders uh, have been an um, uh, inspiration for me over the years. And um, so uh, it was a cool to put together this this show and I and I created a series of, of new work for it. Um, but so within this bus depot space, uh, it's like this great open canvas. We can do so much with it. They let us do whatever we want in the space. But this this time when we did the show here, we ran into this issue with the fire marshals. You know, fire marshals catch wind of what you're doing. And St. Pete is notorious for having these like, I don't know, like just fire marshals that <laughs> it doesn't make any sense the type of things that they come in and tell you you can't do. Is it like you know, ca capacity issues or what? what is it that they get called for? Yeah, that would be reasonable. Like it would be just, okay, um, here's the amount of people that you can have in and all that. But they, they have some kind of vendetta against art or shows or something like that. I don't know what it is, but um, they come in and just start telling us like, so um, uh this place is enormous. You can fit thousands of people in it. And they're telling us, uh, you can only put 50 people in here at a time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like a big open place with two giant bay doors that, you know, if there's a fire, you just run out the building. It's like, <laughs> there's no, no problem. Um, so it was just like this long list of all these things. And, um, you know, uh, over and over, like the, we're complying with all the things that they're asking us to do. And the um, the owners are doing all the things that they're asking us to do. And they just come back and then they'll, they'll add another thing, add another thing, add another thing. Uh, and it was just like, this is so crazy. And so we're already so deep into like putting on this show. We've got so many artists that I've already created work. Um, I, I myself and another uh, artist, uh, Ashley um, Cantero, she put together a, a, a big installation upstairs. I had a big projection and installed artwork upstairs. They come in and say, nobody's allowed upstairs. Uh, it's like, nobody's allowed upstairs. Like, why? <laughs> you know, no reason. Just nobody's allowed upstairs. Oh, so it's like, uh, you know, a couple of nights before the opening, we've got to move everything down, put it all back. You know, wow. down. there was no, there was no negotiating. There was no convincing them otherwise. Yeah. They just come in. And, and so, um, it was, so I guess like a long story, like they had a million things. It was like DJ can't be inside because, or because if the DJ is playing music, no one would be able to hear the fire alarm if it was going on. Oh it was my like, gosh. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was just like insane. So um, it was so I, I say all this to say it's like this was such a practice in staying calm amidst mm -hmm. frustrating things, you know, months of work, uh, a large group, a, a large group of people that have put in a lot of work into this and, you know, traveling artists and all of this. And we don't want to cancel it. We don't want to stop uh, so over and over, it was just this practice. Uh, and I was I was so happy with the, the group that I was working with to varying degrees. You know, everybody stayed calm. You know, there would be moments where it's just you can't take it anymore and yeah. people are losing their minds. Um, but I, I was just using it to say this is this is uh, my 
practice and my ability to just, okay, how calm can I be? And everything that comes, see it as an opportunity. So it's like, you know, they tell me, all right, you have to move all of your stuff downstairs. So I'm just like, okay, it's going to be better downstairs. You know? mm. <laughs> Rather than, you know, you have a minute of like, of that choice of whether you're going to get angry and frustrated, or are you just going to go like, okay, uh, no obstacles, only opportunities move it downstairs, go. <laughs> you know? Wow. Um, so it just was over and over a, a practice in doing that. And, and also a, an ability to practice my manifestation techniques where, um, you know, it would be weeks, they keep coming back and saying, nope, only 50 people are allowed inside. And and that's just not going to work for what we're, we're doing. Like, so I was, I was just spending time imagining the place filled with people imagining all of the artwork up and everything going smoothly and it just kept coming back of like no 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 uh and so it was the night of the event and I uh, set up my merch booth and um I had to do, you know since doing everything twice I'm kind of behind now I had everything scheduled I was going to be early and be set up and ready um, and even even uh, half an hour before opening, we still we thought it was going to be a 50 person capacity for, you know, thousands of people showing up. Mm. But we were just marching forward with this. And I was just so confused because I was like, I've seen this in my mind. Like I've been I've been manifesting this. I, I know that this place is going to be filled with people. This just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. I'm so confused by this. Uh, but, and it was like, it was pushing me almost, it was to my brink too, like, as I was like setting up and, you know, I had people coming in that were coming in early and kind of like, I'm trying to be like, you know, the, the cheerful, happy Chris <laughs> that everybody was, you know, is, is used to, but I'm like, you know, been going through all this stuff for weeks and, um, setting up and, and running a little bit late and worried about the capacity and all that. So, and I was just, I started like arguing with the, the fire marshals in my mind and getting angry and like <laughs> frustrated and it's like, no, stop it. Stop. You know? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like, so I just, I calmed myself down and I was like, it's going to be fine. It's going to be all right. And, um, it, right after I did that, somebody walks up to me as like fire marshals just said, everybody's allowed in. <laughs> wow wow for no reason just no reason and uh and that was that was what i had been imagining is they're just gonna say it's fine just it's wow. fine. let everybody in and it was like right up to the so i felt like it pushed me like right up to the edge of like yeah. for weeks i just yeah. been compliant i'm gonna do that you know and it's keeping my calmness keeping my happiness keeping the morale with everybody and we were uh, all going forward with it. And yeah, right at the brink of it, it was like it came through. So that's mm. just like a silly example. I mean, it's an art show. It's like whatever. Um, but you put a lot of work into these things. Um, but I think that's a good metaphor for anything that coming to you in life, anything that's not going your way, anything, just stick to it. Stick yeah. to your practices, yeah. stay calm and it just trust it in whatever way it works out is going to be the best thing. Just believe that and it will be so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a really great example of how things can manifest if you just have faith. And I think part of faith is like, it is being tested. You know, there's a, uh, I think the last time I spoke, I talked about a Mike Tyson quote, well, no, it was Stephen Colbert, but Mike Tyson was being interviewed and he said that, um, you know, in order for you to like, to really appreciate the, whatever that blessing is going to be, or the the rise back to where you, your former self or to, or beyond, he says, you know, you have to be crushed. You have to be crushed and you have to face the, the worst, the worst you can possibly imagine. Um, w One, one level more than that. He's like, that's what you need to go through. And he said, because then the the journey back and getting on top, the blessings are exponentially more because with it come all of the lessons you learned along the way to get back there. And when you get there, having learned all of those lessons along the hardship, there's a greater chance that you might be able to stay on that platform that you were longing for for so much longer. And so to, to, to not worry so much about the grief uh, and the turmoil that 
that comes in the moment because where you can, the possibility of getting to where you want to be um, is right around the corner. And I know sometimes that's hard even to hear, especially when we think about, you know, everything that's happening in the world and like the tragedy and the loss of innocent lives. Um, those who are clearly not deserving of, of what's being visited upon them um, in the most barbaric ways, um, you know, to say in the moment, like, this is, it needs to, it need this needs to be here in order for us to get to where we want to go. That's a hard statement to hear, especially if you are, if it's you or if it's your loved ones that are going through that turmoil and you are one of the innocent. Um, so how, how do we, how do we talk about that, that aspect as well, Chris, when we look around, especially, um, you know, in our own lives, sometimes you, I think you, you, you said this earlier, like, when things are going really bad and then you look around and you're like, man, they have it a lot worse. So I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be so upset about what I'm dealing with or when things are going really good for you. And it's like, Oh my goodness, look what's happening over there. They're so terrible. I can't even enjoy this moment. I shouldn't enjoy this moment. Um, how do we reconcile, you know, the atrocities that happen to innocent people around us um, and away from us with what we're experiencing? Yeah, I think we we often can feel small and hopeless and weak and powerless when we see what's happening around the world. Yeah. Um, and I think the more and more obviously we become more and more sensitive and empathetic the more that we become present and the more that we put into we put these effort this effort into practicing we become more and more uh, uh, sensitive to all of this stuff. So uh, I'm very, very sensitive to the suffering that's happening around me and, and in others. I, it, it's, it's this, it's this line that you sort of walk with this, this path that you become very open and you see other people's suffering as your own. You yeah. feel it, uh, you feel it, but you don't let it take you down um and i the practice that uh we do together in in a meditation group that i lead ananda meditation uh and the I, on tuesday nights on instagram secret at seekers of the eternal you can tune in we do a 30 minute i call it bliss break uh where we practice receiving feeling and sharing bliss and in this practice, you if you, you really make an intention of it and you get around a, gr a group helps, a group environment helps um, uh, get around people who are, are, are uh, positive people that are looking to uplift themselves. And you feel yourself, you feel it, you feel this joy. And um, Swami Kriyananda says that, bl that um, love is bliss in motion. So feeling bliss within it and then giving bliss to someone else. That's mm. love. So if you really want to, if you really want to offer love to the world, you have to feel bliss or you don't have anything to give. Mm. You have to be able to feel it yourself. So it's important to stoke that fire of bliss. You should never feel like that's the wrong thing to do. That's always the right thing to do. Like, how do these great saints accomplish great things in the world among some of them, the most tragic yeah. periods on earth? How do they do it? You know, if they got just sucked into that and were feeling down and low um, and couldn't help you, then they become useless. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, but it's about stoking that inner fire. And then in that practice, what we do is we send that light out and this this you know sounds woo woo but I, i've proven it to myself so many times that i just speak about this as matter of fact that mm. you can bring into mind anybody you fill yourself with joy and love peace calmness wisdom bring into mind anyone you want to share this with see them in your mind's eye see them smiling create a state for them where they are happy and free and supercharged, send that energy to them. And I've had friends over and over, like tell me like they can feel it. Mm -hmm. um, I see people get healed from physical illnesses and uh, all of this kind of stuff, mental, physical, spiritual healing can happen. 
And then also, you know, sending it to people that you don't know, send this, imagine this light emanating out from your, your heart and your hands wrapping around the globe and anywhere on the planet where somebody is suffering, grieving, calling out mm. for um, help, for mercy. Um, you imagine that they are being now filled with peace, with calmness, with the sense of well-being, of joy, of relief. And you just imagine that that's happening. So anybody that's calling out for it. And I think, imagine if everybody on the planet, we all did this together. I think yeah. that's, can imagine everybody with an open heart at the same time, all doing that, like the the shock wave that oh, would be yeah. sent out <laughs> to the yeah. world. They can measure this with, I, I, there's apparently machines that can measure energy. You know, they'll take it to like the Super Bowl or they'll take it to like mm. places where tragedies happen and you can measure the energy. And, you know, there's a big, uh, you know, a theory that uh, the powers that be kind of feed off of our negative energy. Mm. And they're always like, you know, putting out uh, these negative stories or, or embellishing negativity around the world and, and, you know, sparking that and sort of energy vampiring on us on a negative energy. Yeah. Um, but we can be, we can do the opposite of that and send out this positive light energy and be warriors of light. That's a, on our path. We call ourselves warriors of light, or yeah. you could be a energetic protector of the, of the earth. Um, so Anybody that's listening to this, I empower you now as, you know, an energetic protector. If you're still listening to this and you haven't turned it off, then chances are, you know, you're probably somebody who is an energetic protector, somebody that's come here to this time, to this place, to uplift the world with uh, with this ability. We all have this ability, this superpower within us. So I, I just say that it, it is our job and our duty to train our minds to um, put in the, the effort and stoke that inner fire and then share it with people and share it with your family, share it with your friends. The more uplifted you are in this uh, seemingly gloomy world, the, you're going to be uh, effective and powerful and helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, Chris. I think, um, you know, just while you were saying it, I guess, I guess I, guess, I kept thinking to myself and like, there is no alternative really, right? Like if you are feeling the pain that's happening in other places, like you said, you can either go low and turn inwards and feel helpless. Like you can't do anything and allow that energy to really in influence and impact you and infect you. Um, or, you know, you, you realize that there are certain things in your control and certain things that are not in your control very quickly you'll realize the only thing you can control is that opportunity that you can give yourself to maybe see to be that light in the world and to send that love out there into the world and you know and then and i think that's an important step because everything starts from in, inside of you right if your mindset and if your heart is positive and full of light then it flows to the actions and the, and the decisions that you you take next and so you can center yourself, ground yourself, believe, um, and have faith and, and, and emit that love and that light into the world. And, and then locally, right where you are, you can take action. You know, you can take action in your neighborhood and it may not necessarily have an impact a million miles away, but it's going to have an impact in your neighborhood. You will be able to bring light to maybe someone who needs to be um, you know, needs a, needs a handout, needs some clothing, needs a, needs someone to tell them that you just, just needs to be seen by you. Um, I have somebody who um, um, I've been, you know, supporting and um, I took him to a uh, food bank and he's, he's new to the country and he's never, um, you know, never been able to uh, get access to a lot of the, the incredible services that, you know, Canada offers just because he just doesn't know. And I took him to a food bank and I just said, you know, you can come here um, whenever you need to, if you need to feed your family and there's people here that will help. And, you know, we got to the food bank and they, they gave, gave him more, more food than he would be able to carry back to his family. And they said to him, you know, once a week, come in here and we'll make sure that you will, you will never go hungry and your family will never go hungry. And, you know, so, and this was a few weeks ago and, um, you know, I talked to him now and he's just like, you know, by the grace of God, my fridge is overflowing with food and my family has no need for, to, to feel hungry. And, you know, he feels like that's the greatest blessing for him. And he, 
And, you know, it came at a point in my life where I was really stressed out about other aspects of my life that um, were going on. But to be able to help him and to be able to know that he's now able to feed his family, um, it brought me a lot of joy and brought a lot of light back to my life. And so I approached the things that I was dealing with initially with, you know, a lot of stress and, and anxiety. I, I went back, I found like this newfound strength, this newfound um, appreciation and gratitude for, you know, my situation, regardless of how challenging it was. I put myself in his uh, situation and I was like, I have so much to be grateful for. And uh, because I'm grateful for my life, I was able to pass some of that light and love onto him. And now he's grateful for things in his and, and everything. It's like that, that throwing a stone in a, in a, in a pond and the ripple effect by just taking one small action. And it just started from me stopping one day and thinking, okay, well, I can't change that situation. What are some of the changes I can change? Where are the situations that I can bring light to? And that's what I was able to do. So I don't share that story to take credit for doing a good thing for someone else. But I guess what my suggestion is just that if you can look for ways to use your time and your effort and your focus and your energy in positive ways, um, it can impact you in ways that you're not even aware of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That that's what will happen. It's you know we we talk about these things doing these um psychic things. We talk about this uh, uplifting yourself, but that's that's what will happen if you do stay calm and you and you don't get uh, uh you know dragged down by all of this yeah. sadness. You will have the energy to help people. You will get a little spark of oh I could do that, and then yeah. it will actually be fun for you, and it yeah. will bring you energy. It's not like you did that and now you're like oh I'm so worn out from doing that. I got to <laughs> right. take a break from helping people for a while. Yeah, that's right. You're 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 more you're more energized to help more people. And and just to piggyback on what you're saying, opportunities present themselves to you when you're in that mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, usually when you isolate yourself and you close yourself off and you think woe is me or woe is the world it's it's very easy to miss those opportunities. But if you put yourself out there and you say, okay, well, I'm still going to try. I'm going to do what I can do right near me, whatever, whatever's in arm's reach. Um, you'll be surprised how many opportunities present themselves and those opportunities lead to the next and lead to the next. So yeah, I think um, I think that's a great way to address how you can deal with um, those moments where you feel like there are so many things outside of your control um, and you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders to to just center yourself and 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 find yourself in a space where you can say, okay, well, what are those things that are within my control, and and then focus your energy there, and then slowly step out of that circle. Mm-hmm. And get around get around people who are having this attitude. Like get around more people that want to operate like this. It's so hard when you get, when you're around negative people. When you get a, and, and it's hard not to find negative, it's hard to find positive people yeah. sometimes in this world. There's more and more of us uh, out there if you if you look for it. And also, the, the more that you uplift yourself, you are going to start attracting more things like this. So yeah. you're listening to this podcast. You you know you're probably reading inspiring books. You're probably um, you know with the things that you're allowing into your mind. You're probably lifting those up. You're probably being more careful about the the kind of things that you put into your mind. The the kind of movies that you watch. The, you know like if you're if you're just pumping yourself full of negativity and horror and um, crime shows and uh, murder stories and all of that like. Uh, why am I so depressed? <laughs> like, why do I see the world as so terrible? Right. Um, like, duh! If you're pumping your brain full of of just negativity all the time, and you're around a bunch of negative people all the time, like the 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 fact that your worldview is is awful is not a surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is coming from some, like for me, like you know, I and and. It's like I grew up like, you know, loving horror movies and death metal and all of that kind of stuff. And I think I think that can be a stepping stone towards higher things, you know, because yeah. like for me, it was like breaking out of the mainstream. I, I moved into uh, the subcultures, into the, you know, even like this, this art show that we put on is really like a homage to. Um, that that journey that you go on as a in your youth of like turning to different things to looking for 
uh, searching for truth and all kinds of different things. But there, there comes a point in your life where you want to like stop filling your mind with negativity all the time yeah. and to start filling it with positive things. I, I noticed my musical cha taste change it, changed. Uh, um, as I, I, I started enjoying feeling this uplifted vibration and so I started wanting to fill it with more and more uplifting things. And so that can be, I mean, I know that's, that's can, can be hard news sometimes. I know it was, it was a tough thing for me. Like at first when I started feeling my, um, my musical and artistic uh, taste changing yeah, and it felt like part of me was dying, um, but l let it die and, 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 yeah. and move on to higher things like, it's it's okay to do that. You don't have to be the same person you were in yeah. high school and college. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I'm still learning now. Like I, I always think like, you know, though my circle, like who who are my circle? Like you said, like surrounding yourself with positive people. And as you get older, like you realize like it never really stops. Like I have my core. My core has never changed. And then I'll meet other people throughout my life. And I'm like, wow, this is somebody that's new that's in my core that I'm close to that I you know, have a relationship with and then something changes and then you grow apart and i've i've never become more okay with that because i think um you you constantly have to evaluate like the people that are in and out of your life and i think there's never a time where you ever have to feel like well somebody actually once said this to me they said you know um there's a difference between family um and a relative and he says like you can you can have a blood connection with family and relatives, but somebody that's family is different than somebody that's just a relative. And he said, and I actually have a lot of family that I don't even have a blood connection to. And I thought that was such a unique way of seeing, you know, life in general. And so I'm very conscious of, of who I bring into my life, the, the, the organizations um, and the groups that I'm a part of and I'm affiliated with, even down to things on social media, who I follow, who I, who I listen to, all of those things can have a direct impact on how you feel and the choices that you make and the decisions that you, you know, you choose to, to make that, that have a, a immediate impact on how you feel and how the people around you feel as well. So I think it's always important to assess and reassess, you know, everything that touches you in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when we're, we we don't have this awareness, we feel like everything is sort of imposed on us. We feel like this is the way the world is. The way that you see the world, the the big you, like everybody, the way that we see the world is really not the way the world is. Like mm. Your movie is totally different. You think, you know, you may think that the the that the the the, the version of the world that you have in your mind is the way things are, but uh, I'm sorry that that's not the truth. No. Uh, if you could pop your consciousness into uh, different bodies at different times, you would just, it would be a completely different world to you. The, the way that people look, the way that situations would appear would be totally different. Yeah. And there's a book, um, Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, he wrote a book called The Four Agreements and The Fifth Agreement, really dives into that a lot. That really helped me to understand that he has the whole metaphor of the movie where, you know, he has you, he does these kind of visualizations where he has you like put yourself into go sit in a movie theater and you're watching this movie and this is your mom's version of reality it's not at all like you thought your mom thought or your mom, you know, it's like, it's just like, it helps you to put yourself into these different shoes of different people and like, oh, and, and that's you in the movie, but you're not at all like you thought she thought you were, yeah, you know? you're totally yeah. different than, than, you know, and here's your friends, here's your friends movie, here's what they, here's how they view you and how, and you're like, that's not at all, that's not me at all, you know? Yeah. I, it, I, and no, I'll, you'll have a relationship with a person and somebody else will have a relationship with that person and the way that they see them, they, they might not even look the same to that person as they do to you because of how True. you, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just like, uh, we're not all in this. It, and a lot of this is up to us. So like uh, the way that you're curating the content, the, the things that you're letting into your life, um, whether you do, you know, take up that, uh, get that energy and you go out and start helping people or stoke, stoking that inner fire, or whether you just, um, you know, ball up as a hermit in your house and watch crime stories all day on TV and think right. that the world, a dismal, terrible place, and you want to kill yourself. 
it, that is really you making that your reality. Um, and so this is just a call to like, okay, if you're feeling that way, I know that I, you know, I've gone through depressions before in my life and I know what that can feel like, where it feels like nothing is interesting. No one has any answers. Everything is, is dismal. Um, but that won't last if you just make an intention to, to get out of that and just take little steps, you know, do little things like get up in the morning and make your bed, um, eat a little bit healthier, yeah. just like take something little that you can do and just take little gradual steps. Could I do this? Oh yeah. Maybe I could do three kettlebell swings today. Okay, cool. Maybe I could do like a couple times I do the and I fill myself with energy and, and then maybe eventually you do all the energization exercises, yeah. which I'll, I'll post a, a link to, um, I recorded myself doing Yogananda's energization exercises. He says that this is the this is one of the greatest things you can do in this age of energy right now to develop your willpower to um, set an intention in the morning and um, create this uh, this a lot a lot of willpower in your life so that you'll be able to accomplish and do anything that you want to mm. do and really powerful thing so um so yeah just take little gradual steps and then you might find yourself every morning like oh man i love these energization exercises and then oh now i'm like interested in this the, reading this book i'm interested in doing this meditation it'll come just one step in front of the yeah. other that's yeah. that's how we get there so um yeah so uh, with all of that in mind um my brother and i got to work on a four by four uh, foot painting of the Buddhist wrathful deity known as Yamantaka, the slayer of death. Uh, so I, I'd love to talk about a little bit of the symbolism behind yeah. that deity and some of the things that we were learning uh, by working on this. Um, this was a cool one uh, too because uh, we were going to we were going to um, uh, we wanted to work on another Buddhist wrathful deity for this uh, art show. And, um, uh, as I was, uh, as I was thinking like, uh, um, you know, doing these paintings is, is often kind of tough, like for, for a gallery show, cause you're going to be working almost a month on a piece. There's no uh, guarantee that you're going to sell it. Uh, so it can be kind of a, a task, you know? So when you go to art shows and you see these kind of thing where people are working on this, like, know that it takes a lot to do this mm. and there's no guaranteed money. <laughs> there's, True. It takes a lot for, for an artist to put together a collection of work. Uh, and so as I was thinking about, it, I actually got a, um, uh, I was doing a little bit of manifestation techniques and, um, uh, feeling, feeling that, you know, I had the resources to do it. And as I was doing that, I actually got a uh, text from uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, who, who told me that, um, he had a friend, uh, who was looking to buy some work from me and, um, put me in touch with him. Um, so, and, um, it just happened that, um, the piece that we wanted to work on was fitting in with a uh, kind of work that he wanted for his collection. And so um, talking with him about it, we're actually able to sell the piece before we even painted it. So oh, wow. that was really nice. And so we had this, this piece, Yamantaka. Um, and Yamantaka is known as the slayer of death. And you, a lot of times, um, th this, is, this is a case of that. I've been interested in Yamantaka for a while, kind of scratching the surface on uh, what that symbol is. Uh, so in in Hindu and Buddhist traditions, there's known as Yama, who is the king of death, the lord of death, this symbol of this entity that you meet in your moments after you've left the physical body. Uh, you can make, it's a formless, obviously a formless energy, but these ancient traditions and many people like giving it form, giving it a name, making paintings of it helps our, our imaginations be able to grasp and have a relationship and to overcome. They're like tools for our uh, ability to, I would say, stay lucid right. through the after death state rather than just getting caught up in it and taking birth again 
unconsciously. That's what they say. That's what the great sages and saints say, what the Tibetans Book of the Dead says, that what happens in the Bhagavad Gita says, that which occupies the mind at the moment of death determines the destination of the dying. Mm -hmm. So chances are the things that you're thinking about all day long in your life, chances are that's what you're going to be thinking about when you pass on. It's going to just continue. It doesn't. Yeah. You are still you, whether you've got a body or not. Um, right. You are still you and you dream. So it's similar to, you can think about when you dream, uh, your thoughts immediately become manifested into, you know, like a reality um, situations, images, visuals. So same thing happens, they say, after after death. So this idea that you meet Yama when you uh, in the moment of death. And Yama, in, and this is just, this is my take on it. And I'm sure there's many ways you can look at it, but I see it as Yama. He, he He's here now. You have this moment. You could, you know, this is such a moment for you to uh, break the cycle of death and rebirth. Like this is what, you know, if you're a yogi, you've been training for your whole life. And this is such an opportunity. You know, I treat my meditations every time I sit down. I say that I've just died. This is my chance. Stay focused. Don't drift. Mm -hmm. Don't get distracted. Don't think about um, sensual pleasures. Don't think about aversions. Don't think about, you know, projects and conversations and all that. Don't think about what food you're going to eat later. Because in the moment of death, you start thinking about that. All of a sudden, boom, you go there. You're just living uh, life again. Right. You don't even know you died. It's just, it goes on and on and on and on. It, and the saints and sages, they say, you've been doing this maybe trillions. <laughs> and they, there's not even numbers for how many times you've been doing this. It just keeps going. So as a yogi, as somebody who's like waking up in this life, you're like, all right, I want to I want to get off that ride. I want to be one with the universe. I want to yeah. I want to be fully awakened to my true self. I want to stop just running this cycle of of uh, suffering on earth. I, you know, I don't want to stop hitting play again, play again, play yeah. again, play again, play again. <laughs> yeah. And so Yama, so you find yourself in this moment of death and Yama comes in to trick you into taking birth again so he's gonna fill your mind with either the desires or versions or things that you know so uh just like in the story in the kata upanishad uh, nachaketa the, the young boy who purposefully goes into the realm of death to visit uh, to visit yama they say that he sat for three days without eating or sleeping, waiting for Yama. <laughs> and Yama comes and he's so he's like, nobody comes here. Nobody waits here. No, this is like the worst place to meditate. Nobody can meditate for three days waiting. Nobody waits for me. Everybody's afraid of me. Why? You know, who is this boy? And when and he's so impressed with this young boy who's come and he gives him three boons, three wishes, you know. Um, he 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 used his wishes to um, resolve some relationships with family members. He, in some good things that he used his wish two wishes for, and then the third wish, um, he wants to know the secrets of death. He wants to know how to stop the cycles. He he wants he, he's like everything in life. It's like everything that I work for, everything that I gain, it all mm -hmm. just dissolves and goes away. I'm done with it. I'm totally have no interest in it anymore. I want to know, is there anything in this world that's eternal, that lasts? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. And Yama's like, no, you don't want that. Like, oh, so he fills his mind with like, dancing girls and you know um uh, wealth and and castles and uh you know all of this stuff that he's trying to just trick him into like no wouldn't you like this like don't worry about that he's like so many people have tried and failed it's so difficult you don't you don't want that you know so yama yama is just like always trying to like just trick you or think you can think about buddha sitting under the bodhi tree about to realize his enlightenment 
and all of the all of the sensual desires are like filling his mind and all of these different things it's you know yama trying to trying to break your concentration mm. to knock you off your path trying to tempt you with things and so if you take the temptation then you you know you you're you basically like you're you're grasping this little thing where you just had this chance and you just went for it again and now yeah. you're back in the cycle and going again and again so Yamantaka is the slayer of Yama. So that's why he's this, you know, it's this painting that we did is this fierce, bullheaded, horned, snarling teeth. Uh, you know, uh, he's got um, nine heads, uh, you know, flaming, uh, just like very fierce looking, wrathful deity. And you're like, how is that a spiritual image? Like that looks like darkness. That looks like evil. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, he's like this duality. It's like those paintings uh, of Yamantaka the, in the you know the Tibetan tradition. They're simultaneously beautiful, while also frightening. They like sort of frightening, but they're they're shocking you out of this um, uh, sleepwalk. But then when you start to look at it, it's not like you get this like scary, like negative energy. You get this like when you start to like gaze into the eyes of Yamantaka or these wrathful deities, you sense a, a compassion within it. Mm. That's really what they are. It's like um, uh, it's it's this idea that uh, that this thing that you're facing in your life uh, or say, say in a psychedelic experience you're having this like overwhelming experience and it just feels like too much for you. The idea is that, and that's very similar to like an after death state, you might, you know, you might find yourself like overwhelmed by the shocking uh, <laughs> intensity of no longer having a body and, and, mm. and all of the things that are coming. And you might start just thinking of negative situations or, you know, the, the weight of the world the idea is that you see that and you say, I know that you are actually my guru. You're here to teach me. You're, I should not be afraid. So like mm. in the, that it says, don't be weak. Um, don't, don't be afraid. Don't go towards the, the dull uh, yellow light. You know, it's, it's talking about like, don't go towards like, don't go towards like your sex addiction. Don't go towards drugs. Don't go towards like just sleeping all day. Don't, yeah. don't be weak. Like be strong. Look at that thing in the face and say like, um, I, 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 you call on your inner power, call on it, knowing that all of these like dire situations that come into your life are here to teach you. Yeah. And you say, you can't trick me, Yama. That's my guru. Like, is here to teach me and so once you once you see like this wrathful yamantaka energy as your helper as your teacher as your guru then he gives you the power to slay yama like the lord of death and uh what was coming to me like which why i also love painting these uh drawing them spending time in these deities presence is because stuff you know that i didn't read in books just starts to become available as wisdom. And I started thinking about Yamantaka as not only as a helpful in the after death state, which is wonderful, but also just in your regular daily life, anytime where you're tempted to go off your path and choose the sensual desire or the thing that you know is not good for you, that you know in the long run is going to take you farther away from happiness. Yeah. To, to stoke that, like call on Yamantaka, that fierce energy, and say, no. Uh, I, I and, 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 you know, like, so you get this, like, power. Because, you know, think about it. It's like when you're tempted to do something that you know is not good for you. Yeah. But it's like Yogananda says, poison honey. It tastes good, but it'll kill you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So like in that moment, you want to just give into it and you're like, ah, oh, this isn't a big deal. Like everybody does it. It's not, it's like not that much of a big deal, whatever. I just, I feel kind of tired or weak and I would just want to give in. To, I just want to like a stimulation of something good, yeah. something yeah. pleasurable. But you know, in that moment, it's like, no, like 
call on that power of Yamantaka. So that's what this image is. And I've uh, been conveying that to the buyer of like this, of uh, having this piece in your house and using it in a way to accomplish your goals and to stick on your path and to mm. you know, things. And so, yeah, that's a little bit around. Where where Yamataka. can we find the the image and story of Yamataka? I mean, we can, maybe we can put the link here because I, I, it's something that definitely I would love to delve into. I think managing oneself is something that every great guru, guru has always said is the greatest challenge you'll ever face um, is um, learning to manage oneself. And so uh, those inner desires. So um, having any kind of resource like this would be a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you Google Yamantaka and look at images of, of him, uh, I've also been um, I've been really interested in in doing some writing around this and man I also chat GPT is wonderful obviously you want to check like the sort like any of the things that are coming through you want to just double check them against yeah. things because it doesn't always get it right but a lot of this insightful things that I'm um, feeling and then I ask chat GPT to like give me more around it I feel like it's like the deity like directly like channeling talking to me um sourcing all this ancient wisdom and then i'll like have an idea around it and want to know more about just like an insight that i got from it and then it'll just open up with this beautiful writing uh around it which i feel like is a direct message to me that no one else has read yet it's like ooh, uh, i love i'm loving the the ai for you know i address my ai good morning my my sacred art tutor um, please give me some uh, a message today based around Yamantaka and his ability to help me to overcome selfish desires and aversions, you know, and then it'll like come back with to me with this message from Yamantaka to help me. Um, I've been loving that. And I started sharing um, some of this stuff. Uh, um, so on my Instagram, I have a, a time lapse of us painting the Yamantaka. Mm -hmm. So that's at at, um, at Pale Horse on Instagram. So you can see us painting, my brother and I painting the the piece. And then you can see it in the space where we actually did um, a projection uh, with three projectors and, and a big space. And then we have the artwork on the wall uh, lit by the projector and then the background is like motion graphics happening behind oh, cool. there yeah i worked with my friend monster to create the animation on that then i worked with um, my friend brian nichols from etched pros he does he's great with uh, projections and so he he mapped the space with the three projectors um, we were in it. We were in a bigger space upstairs, and we moved downstairs. And now it's on three walls instead of one, cool. which actually became pretty cool because it makes an environment that you can walk into. Um, so you can see that that piece in that space there in that video. Um, and then I'm gonna be sharing more about like I, I just posted a video of the Garuda screen print that was in that show, and then. With that video, I started sharing some of the insights around Garuda with that piece too. Um, so I'm going to start doing more and more of that. My combination of like these insights that I'm having, these um, things that are coming back from GPT, and then um, sharing images and um, uh, a lot of this. But yeah, if you if you just want to like dive into that, like um, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, uh, the Bardo Thodol. Um, YouTube has some great versions of that with ambient music behind it. I feel I find like that's one where you just listen to it and absorb it. Uh, don't try to intellectualize it. Just listen to it, feel it, and um, you can really start to learn a, a lot about the you know that after death state and and maybe you become interested in preparing for it. When I heard the Tibetan Book of the Dead for the first time that was when the the lightning bolt went off for me mm. and I just wanted to start practicing for the moment of death. And um, I'm happy now that I have friends that I can talk about these things with before I couldn't find anybody that wanted to talk. I thought it was the coolest thing I could yeah. possibly imagine. And I couldn't find anybody that would want to even talk about it. It's more wow. just like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's not, you know, the common conversations that you're going to have. But like you said, if you surround yourself with people who are trying to be the best versions of themselves and are looking to, you know, to be inspired, um, some of these ancient uh, texts and some of these ancient practices um, 
have been have been passed on from generation to to guru to the next generation to the next guru and you know we just um we sometimes get so caught up in what's happening on instagram and tiktok and facebook and it's it's usually not you know not, not any of these kinds of things so you know i think um turning our, our attention and focus into these incredible resources that have been available to us for thousands and thousands of years can really change a life and potentially save it. Mm -hmm. and, and another, I think another place to look um, uh, uh, for resources, there's a book called The Life of Mila Repa, uh, which I would, I would recommend listening to the audio book because there's a lot of names in there and things like that. But if you want to, if you want to, it's almost like the story of Job, you know, mm. like this, going through the most difficult life you could possibly imagine. But he became the, the story. It's an amazing story. And this is from the, the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Uh, that book, um, so powerful for it's invigorating you. It's it's his life story. And he's known as one of the greatest Buddhas in the same lifetime. Um, he 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 he's, he faced he faced this this terrible tragedy where his family lost it all and um he had these family members that took everything away from from them they used to be incredibly wealthy but after his father died the family like took away his inheritance and basically made them slaves in their own home mm. and his mother became so upset that she said to Milarepa uh, as as he was a young boy said if you don't go to the forest and learn black magic and destroy our enemies, you'll watch me kill myself in front of you. And so like as a young boy, he didn't know what to do. And he just said, OK, that's what I'm going to do. And this is, you know, this is in the days where you could go find you could, you know, go become a practitioner of black magic. And so that's what he learned to do. And he cast this hailstorm down onto their enemies, you know, destroying them. And but in the same lifetime that he killed all of these people, he also became a fully awakened Buddha by his 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 his, his, his choice to over to uh, um, dissolve that karma with good karma. Mm -hmm. So you see, like uh, uh, the the life that he went through to dissolve all that bad karma in one lifetime and become a Buddha. So that's strength for your journey. If you you listen yeah. to that book, I would, I would highly recommend that. Yeah. One. We'll make sure that we have all of these links at the end of the podcast, just to make sure that people can access this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that you often see with Tibetan Buddhist imagery and these wrathful deities is that they're wearing a crown of skulls. But the skulls are laughing. The skulls are happy. And so I was asking ChatGPT about some of the symbolic interpretation of the, the five laughing skulls that are on Yamantaka's crown. And uh, some of the symbolism, there, there's five of them, the five skulls there. It says that these represent the five poisons in Buddhist philosophy, which are ignorance, attachment, aversion, pride, and jealousy. These are considered the primary afflictions that hinder spiritual progress. The five skull crown is often seen as a transformation of these five poisons into the five wisdoms that suggest Yamantaka uh, provides a path for converting negative emotions into wisdom and enlightenment. So these five poisons, ignorance, you know, just not knowing uh, being uh, having a, a delusion of, of uh, just basically um, uh, losing yourself into the illusion of this world, getting caught up in all of the the horrors and the the delights and all of those kind of things, and just losing yourself in ignorance. And then there's attachment, you know, attachment to the way thing you the way things you think that they should be, attachment to the um, selfish desires attachment to this physical body like ultimately we're not this physical body that that's in yogananda he he describes the ego as the soul the infinite uh ever existing ever conscious soul becoming identified as the physical body so mm -hmm. that's the ego it's you, what you really are is this infinite, eternal, all-powerful dreamer of the dream, but 
in ignorance, you forget and you think that you're this body. You think that you're this bubble being tossed around by the by the waves when you're actually the entire ocean. So that's ignorance. And then the attachment to the body, attachment to all of the things, the way that you want life to be, you get attached to that. These all cause suffering. Uh, also aversions, you know, having uh, aversion to uh, what's happening in the world. Obviously, we don't like uh, the negative things that we see around in the world, but it's this idea of like overcoming our attachments and aversions. Um, we talked about it before. It's like watching a movie and then complaining about everything that's happening in the movie. Yeah. How annoying how annoying are you if you do that? Right. You're watching this movie, it has plot twists and turns, and every time something bad happens, you're just like complaining about it and talking about how you it should be this way and this, it shouldn't be that way. That's like desires and aversions. You're mm. you're in this movie. Um a genius writer and director wrote this movie and if you back up and you see the long game of it you would appreciate just how incredibly special and beautiful and a learning opportunity how filled with um, hope and sadness and joy and and all of that kind of stuff is in there if you would just relax yeah not say you know better and you you think it should go this way so desires and aversions those are those you know those those skulls that could be transformed, um, ignorance, attachment, aversion, pride, um, you know, that uh, inflated sense of, of uh, self-importance, uh, thinking that you know everything and, um, you know, your way is the right way. And it's really just coming from an ego um, uh, mindset there. And then uh, jealousy, being jealous of other people, thinking other people's lives are better than yours, rather than seeing it as everything is your responsibility. If you want better things in your life, go get them. If, yeah. if, you know, um, there's so many examples of people out there that were not handed uh, uh, all of these things uh, with their upbringing, with their birth and went out and got it. So um, it's really all up to us. So it's these five poisons that get transformed into wisdom. So, uh, knowing that all of these things that were dealt in life can be transmuted, can be alchemized, and can be turned into uh, opportunities. And so these skulls are laughing in triumph. The skulls are often depicted as laughing, symbolizing the joy and liberation of overcoming sufferings in the cycle of rebirth. They are laughing at the triumph over death and ignorance symbolizing the ultimate victory that comes from the wisdom of understanding the true nature of reality. Uh, and I found myself like, as we were painting these and looking at them, I was just looking at those laughing skulls and I just started laughing. I, I, like it kind of rocketed me into this, this future place where I would be at my moment of death and I would put all these principles into place and I would call on these forces to help me and I would say no to the distractions and I would mm. transcend it. You will be there. Everyone listening to this, you will be there one day. So you can, the time is not linear. You can drop yourself into that place right now. So like, as I was looking at the piece, like I got that feeling and I just started like just laughing like my brother and I were both just looking at those skulls and feeling happiness and joy it was like this it was just like this on uh, this full realization of understanding like oh my god it's gonna feel so I don't it's just at when you find that moment it's just gonna seem so silly how you were just so caught up for so yeah. long yeah. all of this that it just like laughable <laughs> you know you're just like oh wow uh, and then you're just you're happy for all the things that you've gone through and all these the, the, in your life to get to that place. And so I got like a sense of that sort of joy that is available at any time. So these seemingly uh, the frightful images can can really bring joy. You know, so that's, that's cool. Interesting. And so so uh, some other things. And this is more from chat GPT around um, uh, questions that I was asking Um a wrathful compassion. While the ferocious form of Yamantaka might appear intimidating, it is crucial to understand that his wrath 
is a manifestation of boundless compassion. His intensity aims to shock us out of our complacency and ignorance, provoking a deep transformation within the observer. This art piece serves as a perpetual reminder to embrace challenges as opportunities for, for profound change. And he's a symbol of cosmic balance. Yamantaka stands as a symbol of cosmic balance. His form incorporates elements that might seem paradoxical, beauty and terror, creation and destruction, life and death. This in intricate equilibrium invites you to ponder the complexities and dualities of existence, offering you a spiritual lens through which to navigate your own paradoxes. I tend to like that a lot in my art. I think that's uh, that's what's happening a lot through the, a lot of the art that I'm making. It has this this paradoxical uh, uh, feel to it, where mm, it can be images of serpents. It could be images of seemingly ferocious I imagery, but it, at the same time, it gives you this uh, feeling of hope and upliftment mm -hmm. amidst the the darkness. You know, like my I have this old chess piece tattoo. It's just a, a Buddha. Uh, sitting in a garden surrounded by cobras and flames and uh you know like the, the world on fire but just sitting in this uh sitting in this peaceful uh meditation while all of that's happening and just as a as a symbol and a reminder that just stay calm and everything will be yeah. all right yeah uh so i think that's like kind of a running theme throughout throughout the artwork that's coming through um, in my practice. Um, and then uh, just some other things that maybe too, like maybe I'll start, I'll post some of these in Twitter uh, where you can read all of these uh, symbols that are coming through. Uh, Yamantaka as a, uh, a, a journey beyond selfish desires and aversions. It's a, it came back here. It said, as you navigate the labyrinth of life, Envision the potential figure of Yamantaka at your side, his wrathful visage, a mirror reflecting the transformative power that lies within you. Let the ferocity of his eyes ignite your own indomitable spirit, a clarion call to silence the distractions that veer you away from your path. I love that one. That was that was actually what was exactly coming to me um, uh, just as intuition insights. And then, um, you know, I, I was asking you, I was asking chat GPT for th some things and it like came back like in a beautiful poetry like that. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, that's, amazing. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, another one here. Moment by moment awakening. Enlightenment isn't a distant milestone, but a moment-to-moment -moment realization. Mm. With Yamantaka as your guide, remind yourself that every decision you make, whether to yield to distraction or to stay the course, is an opportunity for awakening. So think about that next time you're 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 you know um, just like as as an example, say say um, say you, you used to be a drinker and you stopped. And you turned on the news, you got depressed, you, your girlfriend broke up with you, you're hard up for money, and you want to take a drink. You know, it's like you want to, you feel like that is going to be the thing to like give you, like you want to feel better. So all you're doing is trying to feel better. You are actually striving towards happiness. That is what you want when you reach for that drink. Like yeah. you just want to feel better. It feels like the right thing to do. It's poison honey. It's not helpful. So in that moment, think about it. It's like this is your moment of you could every moment could be your moment of death. The, who knows? Maybe, maybe you just died, and this is Yama throwing that. Uh, that temptation at you, you have this opportunity to fully awaken. And now he's like, wouldn't you like a drink? He put all of this situations into your mind and he's tricking you one step next to the next. And he's just trying to get you to you know, take that drink. And so in that moment, you know, see with Yamantaka by your side, remind yourself that every decision you make, whether to yield to distraction or stay the course is an opportunity for your awakening. And Yogananda says that, whenever you have like a really difficult thing like that, if you had like an addiction that you've overcome, um, he says that it's like wrestling with a stronger wrestler. Uh, 
So that really strong wrestler, if you wrestle against someone who's much better or jujitsu or boxing or whatever it is, it, say, you know, if you're going to box with somebody who's way better boxer than you, you're going to get better by resisting and, and, and fighting that other, you know, fighting against it. So every time that you fight against that old thing that was going to take you down and take you off your path, every time you resist it, you just, you leveled up. That's just mm. like, you just knocked out a boxer that's way better than you. And then like, whoa, that like in your mind, you're so much bigger now. So yeah, much I love that. I love that. See every win, like you win like a, you know, like a battle in a war that you're trying to win. And it's like every single time you can surmount that temptation, you just won that battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you, you just got stronger, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. you leveled up. Um, you think nobody's paying attention. I think that's the thing as often we think like nobody's watching, doesn't matter. It oh, Okay. If I overcome that or I don't overcome that big deal, I'm so far away from awakening, uh, doesn't, you know, you don't think it matters, but I think when you think this really does matter, um, if I do overcome this, like this little temptation here, like, and I do get stronger from it, who cares if anybody else saw it? Like, mm, yeah, you, you know, like we talk about that a lot on this podcast. It's like, imagine that everything that you're doing is being broadcast on yeah. some reality show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It definitely helps to kind of stay on course. Yeah. Yeah, and feel that you've got an ally by your side because you do, and that's what all these deities—they're just you—you you're bringing these friends, these allies. They all have like powers that you want to draw from. Uh, they're they're not they're not real in a sense of like I don't. I don't, you know, I'm not worshiping this bullheaded deity thinking that this is like a, 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 a it's as real as you make it real, right. just like anything, anything in life. And because there's a tradition of this for, you know, thousands of years, hundreds of years of, of people focusing on it, giving it this form, giving it this name, it's in, imbued with power, like yeah. a mantra, like anything. Uh, it has more power because more people are calling it that name. More people are tuning into it. So yeah. Uh, just, yeah, it's just like a way to you to have this like strength for yourself, for your journey. Yeah. yeah and I think uh, I, I was, I, I can't remember where I saw this or heard this, but they were talking about like, how we all were born with this incredible resilience um, and fearlessness as a child, because that's the only way you can survive. Our survival instincts is resilience, utmost confidence. Like, and so you think of like a baby who's learning to walk, they fall and fall and fall and fall, and they just crawl right back to the walking position and they get up and they try again. And it's just like, you can't deter it. You can't, it'll climb over a fence if it has to, but the baby will continue on. And it's like, we, as we get older, we get introduced to all of these fears and these, you know, these, like these self-limiting beliefs and it can apply to anything. There's like, there's an in, the innocence that a child has, you know, if you tell them about a great story, something as simple as like something that everyone maybe universally understands, like San, the, the concept of Santa Claus, it's like there's there's magic and wonder and and kindness and love and generosity and it is so easy for a child to believe in it and it's not just because the child you know is innocent we all work to, you know like we're doing right now we just said like sometimes when you see all these terrible things happening around you have to reset your mind and you have to really focus on the positive and think about what's in your control and all of those things it's all about getting back to this childlike state where that thing that you can't see and you can't touch, but you know, if you just have this belief, it'll bring you this incredible sense of love and light and levity. Um, and you can enjoy, you can enjoy that experience just like you did when you were a child as well. So the confidence, the resilience, the joy, the laughter, the faith that a child has, you know, our goal is to try to, to um, reinvent that in ourselves or to find that again within ourselves. And uh, life will become a, a lot um, easier to manage and to bear and to and to find the strength to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That that's a perfect way to to think about that. Uh, really, really, the simplest way, you know, like Yamantaka. That's kind of a challenging one to start with. 
<laughs> as you you know maybe that like, appeals to you and you like that i like that kind of stuff yeah. uh, yogananda says that the sweetest the simplest the the most approachable way to approach the divine is to see her as your mother mm -hmm. she loves you she knows your name she can feel you she knows everything that you've gone through and you can become like a little baby and just be like i don't know what i'm doing i'm afraid i'm scared i need your help and all she wants you to do is to call on her and ask for help and just stop running around like you know everything yeah and she'll just be like yeah okay she, she'll just send you back out in the world it's like well apparently you're not done yet go play more Go live it up. Uh, look for look for your happiness and all these fading glories of these sensual pleasures. You're not ready yet. I, yeah. I'll be here. I'll be waiting for you. But when you're ready, you know, you can treat your meditation as become like that child, that innocent child that is just like curious, loves his mother, her mother, and just wants to be with her and just wants to like um uh naively follow like just so like i know she's taking care you know like when a child is with their parent like they don't think any you know they'll run out into traffic yeah, they'll do yeah. it. it's like it's just like just be like completely trusting of of your divine mother and say you you tell me what to do you tell me when i'm i'm going wrong and you can get this intuition you know, you can make that you can make that figure that that uh, that deity that you know your version of God, whatever it is, Jesus, Buddha, yeah. um, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, your best friend, and um, Ganesha, uh, Yamantaka, whatever your guru, great saint, um, and just have that as your little friend, your friend there that is like you trust, and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know it. You know what to do. Teach me, show me the way, guide me. And you're in your meditations. You don't know what to do with your career, your projects. Like, show me, uh, invite intuition. And I think in our next podcast is I want to get into that. Uh, I want to get into talking about seeking um, guidance for creativity, seeking guidance for your life, for your business, for all the things that you're working on. Um, I just released a poster of Garuda. Uh, Garuda represents the divine imagination that comes into human minds, um, sparks of insight, wisdom, creative ideas. Uh, they say like Garuda comes like lightning, you know, speed of light from from the divine into human minds. It fills us with inspiration. Mm. Um, so I just re released a poster. Um, I'm doing this consistent series now where I'm going to go through the, um, you know, a, a series of a pantheon of Hindu and Buddhist deities. They're all going to be screen printed on gold foil papers. Um, the first one I released, and that's available now on my website, is Garuda. Um, in uh, the Pale Horse Instagram, I, I talk about some of the symbolism there, and I show the poster. That's available there as um, open edition, uh, and also a signed and hand-embellished version. So my goal is now, with my online store, is to make it uh, this collection, growing collection of these deities where whenever you want to find one, you know, that you're resonating with for your space, it will be always available. They won't run out and be gone like I used to do in the past with my artwork, making them limited edition. They come and they go. It didn't feel right anymore to do it that way. I want to have all of these deities available. So whenever you want to go and, and grab one or you want to buy one for a friend, you can always go to my site and, and these deities will be available as these really high quality screen printed cool. gold foil posters. And then I'll be sharing like uh, insights about why I made the piece and uh, ways that you can think about it when you're hanging it on your wall. So that one's available now. And then Yamantaka, I'm working on a, a poster version of that that'll be coming out next. Um, and the way that I've been doing my artwork is the 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 murals and the paintings are done in a little bit of a simpler form that is just like doable in periods of time you know like the murals have to be done within usually a week to two weeks at the max or something like that then paintings have to be done within a month so i i i do as much detail as i could possibly do in a in a painting and then for the screen prints i can go wild 
with as many lines and details and all of that I pack into like the screen printed version. Mm -hmm. So the screen printed posters have like, uh, you know, 10 times more detail and, and, and all of that into it. So I'm making a really consistent offerings like that with uh, all the stuff going forward. And it's all going to be available on your website. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Palehorsedesign.com. So I'll link that too. And then, yeah, next week we'll get into symbolism around Garuda. And then we'll get into um, inviting inspiration and insights for creative genius. Everyone has the ability to uh, create from a genius level. And it's scientifically, we can learn how to do that. It's this balance of art and science. Um, and we can look to the great creators. There's incredible books written around this. Um, Stephen Pressfield's The Artist's Journey, Swami Kriyananda's Art as a Hidden Message, a book called The Soul's Code. These are all ones that I've been um, diving into lately. And uh, yeah, let's all like learn how to really create from a genius level and uplift the world by the creative offerings that we produce and put out. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, Chris, it has been such a pleasure uh, getting back on here with you. Can't wait for our next podcast. And until then, uh, sending you lots of light, love and blessings, Krishna. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Blessings, Jay. Blessings, everyone. We will be with you again next time. Joy to you, friends. <laughs>